A little bit nervous. <laughs> a little bit nervous. Oh, don't be nervous. It's so, this is so casual. We're just, you know, having a, having a chat. Um, maybe though, uh, so that maybe you will not be so nervous. Um, and so we can get things started. You had said that what we would do together is just like have a Duval beer. Is that how you say that? Duval. Duval. Um, with an E. With an E. Okay. Not with an A. Duval. 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 <laughs> So I got one here. Ah, <laughs> so I'm going to open one and then we can have a little drink here. Do you have the glass also? I don't have a glass, no. <laughs> no. no <problem. laughs> I had none of those, but cheers. Cheers. So I will show you. 45 degrees. Nice pinky action. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. That's how you do it. Perfect <laughs> pour. <laughs> Lovely. All right. Um, so yeah, tell tell me where you're at in Belgium. Um, yeah. I'm I'm in Lierde. L I E R D E. Okay. Let's say near Herarsberg. And let's say about an hour drive from Brussels. And oh, Austin. Okay. Okay. Half an hour from Ghent. You know Ghent? Yeah. And um, yeah. I had actually. And an hour from Bruges. An hour from Bruges. Let's see. Oh, have you ever seen In Bruges, by the way? I know the movie, but I, I haven't seen it, no. Okay. It is an amazing movie. Um, it has, oh, what's that guy's name? Colin Farrell? No, yeah. Colin Firth. Colin Firth. Yeah. Oh man, it's such a good movie. Um, and actually, so today I was looking on Google Street View at Bruges, and it looks quite nice. Um, yeah, I was there maybe 15, 20 times. <laughs> yeah. In so, Bruges. how is Belgium handling the coronavirus and stuff? Um, we have every two weeks we have a national security council. And uh, it's going the wrong way. So we had good figures, but now uh, it is going the wrong way. So maybe uh, lockdown light is coming back again. So we were in lockdown a few weeks ago okay. from March until June. But now uh, we have uh, between two and 300 infections uh, daily. So you have to know we are like New York. New York has uh, about 10 million uh, inhabitants, I think, 10 million. Yeah, I think it's like, well, last time I checked, which was a while ago, I think it was like 8 million, but it's probably yeah. between 8 and 10, yeah. Uh, we are 10, 11 million people in our country, so a little, very little country. So uh, 300 and uh, 400 infections a day is, is going the wrong way, so uh maybe uh lockdown light is coming back again <laughs> yeah yeah so we have to wear masks everywhere now in stores in pubs on the streets in public yeah so, uh, yeah yeah is what you, it said, is. <laughs> you know uh if that if that helps it's not it is kind of a pain in the ass sometimes but it's not the worst thing um no we're we are healthy, so that's the most important. So we right. stay, we, we, we stay in our bubble. We have bubbles now, 15 people. Okay. You have to stay in your bubble. So oh. you, can't get, you can't gather in, uh, in, in the garden with 50 people or 60 people. No, you, you have to gather with, by groups of 15 people. Yeah. 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 Bubbles. Bubbles. Okay. <laughs> yeah, bubbles. It isn't my invention. <laughs> bubbles. Um, yeah, that's that's how they call it. Bubbles. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And so, what? Uh, I guess how has your life changed since the pandemic? Um. Yeah. 
social life isn't isn't uh, um, no, as uh, it, it isn't gone, but it has changed a lot. You can't kiss, you can't cuddle, you can you can do nothing. Uh, you have to be uh, at a social distance. What what is it? Uh, one meter and a half, two meters. So, uh, and I think, uh, I find a lot of people are uh, suspicious in, in their relationships. Yeah. So they had, keep uh, distance, uh, they put masks, or they, they do like this. Uh, so, like the Japanese and the Chinese do it uh, for over 20 years. In the yeah, with the masks, right. With it's the like masks, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For, for, for them it's normal, for us it's, it's new. So yeah, I think, uh, yeah. When you say um, suspicious, like the long-term sort of effects of this pandemic are like people being more suspicious of everyone else. Like, talk talk to me about that a little bit more. What what do you well, mean by that? E e even uh, even without the lockdown, uh, some people uh, put a lockdown on them themselves, so they stay at home, staycation. They don't leave the home. They so you lose contact, uh, you, you don't uh, see them uh, anymore. So people are afraid. Yeah. 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 So I, 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 I don't, maybe I'm a, I'm a little bit pessimistic, but I don't think uh, the relationships like we had them uh, uh, in 2019, they, they, they won't come back uh, very soon, I think. Uh, yeah, people are suspicious. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's difficult to, to 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 get to know people. You you don't see no more tourists uh, like I met Sam a few years ago, in a pub in uh, where was it in Ireland? So uh, yeah, you yeah. stay at home, staycation they call it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we have, we have staycation too. Yeah. So if, if you stay at home, you, you, you don't broaden your horizon anymore. So you, you, you're staying at home and I have my family, but I can imagine if you're alone or you don't have a partner or, 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 or children or, or close friends and mm -hmm. you have to stay in your bubble. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's lonely for some people. Yeah, don't make me feel bad. I'm here all alone. Sam actually just moved out uh, last month. Oh. So now I'm <laughs> all alone. <laughs> but like my mother, she she was alone for a few months, and uh, yeah, she couldn't see her, her grandchildren anymore, and she couldn't see me. Uh, like she's almost seventy, so uh, we stayed uh, in our home, and uh, so we didn't see. Uh, I didn't see my mother for for a few months, so maybe for you it's normal. But for us, we we live. Uh, she lives about ten miles from here, so you can easily drive to her, and she can drive to me. But now we we didn't see each other for like three four months. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. um. It's interesting. I think I was talking to somebody about this, especially for kids. You have a couple kids, right? Three, yeah. How how old are they? Uh, Thirteen, um, ten, and seven. Okay. Yeah, I was sort of talking about how kids, probably like your seven-year-old, um, is going to maybe grow up. Um, like, you just think about how kids, like, take in all this information. They're like little sponges, and they take all this stuff in without, like, proper context because it's hard to explain all the context to a kid. But they're going to mm -hmm. kind of grow up. I wonder if they're going to be sort of more apt uh, or more suspicious, like you were saying, of people. Because it's like, oh, in this time, we weren't supposed to talk to anybody or, like, I, interact with I think I think it's more difficult for the for the eldest one because the the, the little one he, he 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 went to school again and he 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 had his his friends but the eldest one he had one day school between March and June one day right. half a day half a day so right. he's 13 uh, girls uh, movies uh, right. yeah you know you know the whole picture so uh, how how is he going to do it i don't know yeah
how, how do you meet people? How do you meet a girlfriend or or or, or a boy or a girl? Uh, yeah. How, how do you meet them? Totally. At a party in the street, uh, social life. So, well, and I don't know if teenagers are quite as, I feel like the US has really rambunctious teenagers, but maybe they're the same in Belgium as well. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, they just want to be out with their friends all the time. They don't give a yeah. crap about their parents. And yeah, so like, yeah. I'm sure they're going crazy. He's only 13. Maybe in two years, it will be more <laughs> difficult to keep him at home. <laughs> yeah, totally. But hopefully we yeah. have a vaccine by then or something. Um, For the rich, maybe? Yeah. Oh, do you think so? I, I think so, oh especially in the United States. Huh? Yeah, I mean, don't remind here me. Here we have social security, so yeah, here, it's, here it is affordable. Mm -hmm. Here you go to a hospital and they have to uh, take care of you. In yeah. the States, you, you first have to show your, your wallet or your, or your, your banking account. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, I've, the last like couple years, I've been in hospitals more than I ever imagined that I would be mm -hmm. at 30. Uh, and it's truly, it's, it's really sad, like the state of affairs. Um, yeah. Cause not only are you being, uh, not only is everything so expensive, but also the customer service, like quote unquote customer service at hospitals is like mm -hmm. really crazy. It's just bad. Um, yeah. They don't. How, how much do you pay for a dentist in New York? For example, for a dentist. Oh, I haven't been to a dentist in New York in a long, in, in, mm. I don't think I've ever been. Cause I usually, when I go back home to Missouri, I'll go to the dentist. And I think yeah. without, without insurance, I got like a cavity taken care of. And I think it was around yeah. $600. And that was without, How much? 300, How much? $300. $300. Okay. That's, that's. I, I think that was without insurance, but. Yeah. Uh, I'm from a small town too. So, you know, my family has a relationship with that dentist. I, I don't know. It's hard to tell. And that's yeah. why it's so confusing is because every doctor and every place you go tells you a different story about how much these things cost. Um, yeah. Well, let's move on to talk about something a little more fun. Um, you had <laughs> mentioned uh, traveling around and just opening, broadening your perspectives by bringing travelers in. I know you you took my best friend, Sam, in. Um, that's how we sort of know each other. Um, so yeah, uh, what's your favorite travel story? My favorite travel story was in Croatia two years ago. My One of my best friends uh, has had his wedding uh, in Croatia. And uh, in Croatia, it's uh, like now in July, it's like I will tell it in Celsius, in, in the States it's in Fahrenheit, I, I guess. So it's like 35, uh, 40 degrees Celsius in Croatia, so extremely hot. Uh, it's on the Adriatic Sea between mm -hmm. Italy and uh, the former Yugoslavia, so that's uh, extremely hot. So he, he had his wedding in the, over there, I was there with my family. So we get to, uh, we, we were fully dressed in uh, smoking and tie and everything. So, and all the people were on the beach uh, in their bikinis and their, their swimming uh, shorts. And we were passing by uh, on the, how do you call it, on the promenade? How do you call it? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Or boardwalk? So we, so, yeah, so we were in the middle of the attention and it was very, very special. People <laughs> left their shops to come on the street to to see us and uh, it was very special so that was special and um, the mixture of two cultures because my friend is belgian and his wife now is uh, semi um, croatian and semi belgian so okay the flags belgian flag croatian flag uh, the, the local food so the mixture of cultures was very interesting also yeah. So totally. we went to the party by boat. Ooh, that's by boat, nice. yeah. And the the wedding itself was near the beach, so it was special. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> me, uh, I did go to Croatia uh, maybe a couple years ago, and it was so beautiful. Dubrovnik. Dubrovnik, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. that's in the south. Now. We were more in the north. Okay. Okay. Biograd, Biograd, Namuru. Very right. beautiful. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm like, looking to get back there. There was also all these street cats. Um, so just like, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say feral cats because feral cats has a negative connotation, but these cats were just like hanging out on the street and they'd like come into our Airbnb and just hang out. And it was pretty- You like cool. cats? You like yeah, cats? Yeah, I like cats, yeah. Yeah, my wife too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they were super cute and just pretty chill. Uh, so yeah, I liked it there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, maybe another story was when I was a student. I forgot now, but now it comes back. In 89, not 92, I went to Moscow and St. Petersburg oh, uh, nice. as a student. And it was very, very beautiful. Uh, it was the old, old, uh, old city, Moscow. If you now, if you go to Moscow now, it's one of the richest uh, cities in the world. But then it was like uh, just after the communist period. So people were very, very friendly. You know, you, you remember the movies between the, uh, the, the bad guys and the good guys and the bad guys were always the Russians. Right. And one night I, I lost my wallet in, in, in the hotel and it was maybe a few bucks in it because then you had to pay with dollars they wanted dollars 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 and uh, i got my wallet back with everything in it and we drank uh, a lot of vodka <laughs> so they were very very friendly we got to see the the the, the real uh, russian uh, people and st petersburg uh, you know the hermitage you like art yeah hermitage if you if you have the the opportunity you have to go to uh, St. Petersburg and visit the Hermitage. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, winter it's, um... palace. Winter palace. Hermitage is French for winter palace. Okay. Yeah, it's it's on the list, especially if through the with the Mongol rally next year, I'll go yeah. to Russia. Um, not St. Petersburg yeah. area, but um, after that Mongol rally trip, I might decide to like drive the car back. Yeah, but let's say St. Petersburg is here and uh, Mongolia is over there. <laughs> yeah. Mongolia is near China, it's just above China, so between Russia and China. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so let's, um, what are the sites to see in Belgium, either where you're at or maybe Brussels? Um, what should I look for on Google Street View? Huh. That's a good one. I took Sam to Leuven. Okay. Leuven. Leuven. It's uh, one of the uh, oldest uh, university cities in Europe. Leuven. Okay. L-E-U-V-E-N. Leuven. Um, because everybody knows Brussels, Bruges, Ghent. Uh, so I took her to Leuven. A very uh, small uh, city in uh, Flanders. Very, very beautiful. A lot of uh, culture, history. Okay. So go to Leuven, I would say. Okay, yeah, totally. Leuven. <laughs> Leuven. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I also found, I found this like Adam, Adam, um, it's like this big structure that I think is pretty famous. It's like this artwork, maybe in, I think in Brussels, but it's like these balls that look like atoms. Ah, uh, atomium, atomium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Atomium, yeah. Which I thought yeah. was kind of cool. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It represents the, the, the provinces, the provinces uh, in Belgium. Oh, okay. Um, but now there are 10. So normally there are nine, uh, what do you call it, nine, uh, like the balls basically yeah like yeah nine ball. balls yeah yeah and it represents uh, uh um uh how do you say it you know the table the mendeleev the structure of mendeleev uh, with every uh like iron uh, cobalt zinc okay gold you know okay it represents yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a structure atomium yeah interesting yeah it's it's uh 81 meters high, so it has the, the nine balls. You can eat on the top. There is a restaurant. Oh, really? Restaurant, yeah. And it's in Brussels, yeah. But it's uh, known by everyone. And like you have uh, Brussels, Atomium, 
Monaco Piss, you have Bruges, you have Ghent. You can go to Ostend as well on the beach. Ostend. Oh, yeah. Ostend. Do you love a good beach? Yeah. Marvin Gaye, Marvin Gaye lived in Ostend. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I think, uh, I'm not sure, but that he wrote, I heard it through the grapevine. I think he wrote it in, uh, in Austin. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hey, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, he, I think he, 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 he was on, on uh, drugs. Huh? He, he had an addiction. So I think he went to Austin to, to become clean again. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And Austin is known for uh, answer. The painter answer, e okay, N S O R answer, and uh, yeah, maybe Austin the Yeah, yeah. those sound great, those sound great. Um, and then so I want to make sure I ask you, um, uh, I've been asking everybody, what's one stereotype either about it can be about you personally or about um, Belgium in general that you maybe try to combat, um. Yeah, yeah, they always talk about French fries. Let's say they, they are Belgian fries, for example. <laughs> <laughs> and that we drink uh, all the time beer and eat chocolate, maybe I want to combat. Uh, we like a lot, we like beer a lot and chocolate a lot, but we have to work also. <laughs> so we don't, we don't drink beer all the time. We drink a lot of beer, but not all the time. Yeah. No, I was just, um, the, the country before you is France. And so we were talking about how like French people love wine. Right. And it's like, it's not necessarily a negative stereotype. Like wine is good. Beer and chocolate are good. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but it's also like, well, like everybody kind of likes those things mostly too. Um, yeah. so yeah. I, I had a, I have a preparation here. What, what did I wrote? Maybe I have another another example no i wrote i wrote down i think that most of the stereotypes are true beer chocolate the only stereotype i want to dismantle is french fries i would <laughs> like to talk about belgian fries <laughs> so what's the difference between belgian fries and french fries because we invented it. <laughs> Belgian fries. We have the best fries in the world. I mean, that's my favorite food. French fries and nachos. Uh, with because mayonnaise, I'm not with mayonnaise, mayonnaise. Huh? Oh, real yeah. Mayonnaise. Totally with mayo. Yeah. Real, real mayo. Eh? Right. Yeah. Not this <laughs> shit you get over here in the U.S., but in no. Europe, they've got real, real mayonnaise. mayonnaise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I think that's really about it. Um, I will definitely go on Google Street View and we'll like go putter around uh, Leuven and also Bruges. I have to, I'm going to see Bruges again, but it was very nice to have a beer with you. And now I have these lovely Belgian beers to drink. Um, we have over, uh, over 1500 uh, different kinds of beer in Belgium. In Belgium. So oh your question was very, very difficult. <laughs> Which beer to choose? <laughs> yeah, is this, do you like Duval? Like, is this one yeah. you would normally choose or is there another yeah. one you would prefer? D do they sell it uh, in the restaurants in New York, Duval? Yeah, I think so. In some, in some places they will. I've had it before, I think. Um, but yeah. they did they so, did sell this in the grocery store. They had like a big, huge bottle, and then they had these little four pack bottles. So if you if you ate too much, you drink a duvel after the meal, and everything will be okay. Really, that's the. Really? <laughs> that's the idea. Really? <laughs> It seems like that would make things worse, almost. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't, don't drink seven or eight, eh? Yeah, just one. <laughs> <laughs> well, four or five, but not seven or eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much. Um, uh, thank you, Dieter, uh, for coming, yeah. on this, coming on this show. Yeah.